Chapter 20. Game Night. In theory, a party that is focused on playing games and had an attendance of people who were mostly your friends sounds like a great idea. Getting to relax by playing some simple board or card games, talking for a couple hours about whatever comes to mind, listening to your friend discuss interests, and maybe learning something new. The idea that your only responsibility for the night was to be polite and try your best to enjoy it all for its worth. Unfortunately, theories are just theories, and can be disproven at any given point in time. Of course, Gar still held out a bit of hope that wouldn't be the case for tonight. He hadn't actually been to Atal's apartment but once before, and it was because Atal wanted to give him something, and refused to meet him halfway, give it to him at work, or go to Gar's apartment. Atal didn't live ridiculously far away, but it was a lot for what turned out to be a flower vase. Gar never complained, though, and he would never tell Atal that he thought it was a bit much. The entire way there, he'd gotten various texts from Minnow and Tilly who were pestering him with out-of-context bits and pieces of conversations that were being held without him. He had told them specifically he wouldn't be exactly on time. He had to wait for Piranha to get back from a small shopping trip before he could leave since she was taking care of the kids for the night, and then made his way over. He had plenty of time to prepare himself for the game night and whatever that entails. Naturally, he only remembered he forgot to put his tentacles up before he left as he stood in front of Atoll's door. He hesitated for a moment, considering if he should walk all the way back home to put them up, knowing he didn't have anything with him to do so. He sighed, knowing well that would be dramatic, and it didn't really matter. Also, the door was already open, and Atoll was staring at him. Hey, go- Atoll stared, then his eyes got wide and he fell silent. Gar stood awkwardly in front of Atoll as he stared at him. He squinted and Atoll didn't move. So Gar started to lean toward him slowly, bending down a bit. Then he clapped his hands as loud as he could in front of, but not too close to, Atoll's face. And Atoll jumped. Oh, sorry. I do that sometimes. My brain short circuits or something. Atoll smiled and waved his hand. Especially when you show up like... Hold on. Come in. Atoll opened the door wider, backing away so Gar could walk in. Right. Gar followed Atoll in, watching Atoll shut the door behind him. Guys, look, this is insane. Gar isn't wearing his tentacles up. Atoll immediately got in front of him and yelled, thus summoning a few people, including Minnow and Tilly, from the kitchen. Gar shook his head and put his head down, covering his face with his hand. I don't know why this is at all surprising. You always have them up. Prune was leaning against the doorway to the kitchen. I think it looks nice. I think I've told you that before, though. Tilly said with a smile, her voice fading into an awkward laugh when she spoke, tilting her head off to the side. The overhead light hit her earring. It was just silver earrings, but it was enough for him to remind him of that particular tradition he'd actually bothered to research. He frowned a bit before realizing he was staring at her and quickly turned his attention to someone else. Anyone else, which ended up being Minnow. You know, she has a point. There was a weird look in their eyes. I think you look nice. Why do you keep him up all the time? He didn't feel like answering that. No particular reason. You should consider leaving him down more, all I'm saying. They backed up with their hands raised. Normally, he would disregard the comment entirely though he had a feeling that this time he might think about it again later. He might consider it a possibility. Might. Not now. Maybe later. Maybe. Anyway, now everyone's here, let me be honest with you. I have two great ideas. Atoll said with a grin. Do not fucking listen to him. He speaks lies. An inkling ran from one of the rooms down the hall. Kane, come on. Uno and Inkopoli aren't. Those destroy friendships, Atoll. We almost broke up over it. Webb almost left us because you claimed his favorite place in Ngopoli. Kane frowned. Webb was not serious about that, Kane. Atoll rolled his eyes. What about Uno, then? You know how bad those games get. Kane shook his head. You're the one making it dramatic. Atoll rolled his eyes. A grown-ass man crying over losing a card game. When does the party end? Kane was squinting at Atoll. No, no, 10 or 11? Atoll shrugged. Me and you are going to talk at 10 or 11. Kane gave him an odd look and walked toward the room where he came from. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? Minnow said after hearing the door close. You don't want to know. Atoll smiled. He'll be fine. Minnow stared at Atoll as the room fell silent for nearly a whole minute before Prune cleared her throat. So, are we doing a game night or a game night where no one plays games and it's more of just a night? Prune was looking at Atoll with a slightly bored expression. I'll get the games, hold on. Atoll walked quickly toward a closet in the hallway. Gar watched him go and put his hands in his jacket pockets. He tried to focus for a moment, but his mind felt slightly fuzzy for whatever reason. It might not be a bad idea to let himself not think for a while. Atoll came back with a couple games in his arms and set them down the glass coffee table in front of his couch. He started to spread them out on the table and Gar watched nearly everyone move to hover around the games. He took a moment to realize Atoll hadn't actually invited too many people out tonight. 
which was a bit unusual for Atoll, considering he liked having lots of people around. How old is this game? Dude, I seriously haven't seen this game since I was five. Middle picture of a card game, guard couldn't recognize. It's ancient, I swear, I and mean, it's probably Tides. Atoll waved his hand. Sometimes I forget you have, like, 87 boyfriends. Mino rolled her eyes. I have, like, eight. Atoll smirked and raised his eyebrows. Far too many, Mino said with a tisk. You're just saying that because you can't even pull one, Mino. Atoll scoffed, not losing his smile. Dude, Mino frowned. Shut the fuck up. Atoll, till you wishing your head in disapproval. Minnow started it, just putting it out here. Oh, look at this! Atoll pulled a board game out from the pile that looked like it had an overly complicated setup. Minnow briefly looked over at Gar, and he got slightly nervous for a moment, though he wasn't sure why. Something about the expression was still unreadable to him. For a split second, he wondered if maybe it was an obvious and easily read expression, and wondered if he was just denying whatever it was. But that sounded stupid, so he disregarded it quickly. Minnow wasn't looking at him anymore, anyway. He focused now on the overly complicated board game with a deep frown. Till he seemed interested in whatever it was. Prune was looking at the game with a bit of disinterest. You have tons of card games, which are more friendly to multiple players, and you want to play a board game, Prune was saying. You understand the beauty of this board game, and it shows. Atoll was explaining happily. It's okay, I'll teach you. Gar, do you want to play it? Till he gestured for him to come over. Gar walked over slightly closer to look at what the game looked like. The path seemed confusing and hard to follow, and it seemed to have a book of rules that came with it. He shrugged. Dude, it takes us the whole night just to read the rules. Minnow was glaring at Atoll. It can't be as long as the instructions I was given for Dungeons and Sea Dragons. Gar looked at Minnow. I now am wondering who read you the instructions and who you played with. Tilly was looking at him with intrigue. Whimsy. She kept reading things and had to go back and explain it again. He sighed. This is not going to be as frustrating as that, I swear. Atoll gently shook the box. I don't believe you at all. Minnow gave him a look of doubt. On your knees. Atoll gestured for Minnow to sit down. Bro, what? Minnow raised an eyebrow. Sit down. You're helping me put the game together. Atoll restated with a huff, sitting down on the floor and starting to clear the table. Here we go. Torture part two. Minnow sat down on the opposite side of the table, starting to take things out of the box. What was torture part one? Till he asked. Work. Prune answered plainly. I see. Tilly nodded. Gar watched Minnow and Natal set up the board game and start to organize the pieces. He looked up at just in time to see Prune whisper something to Tilly. Whatever it was, it made Tilly cough awkwardly. Gar decided to focus his attention back on the board game. Atoll and Minnow finally finished setting up the board game, and Atoll gestured for everyone to sit down. Gar stared blankly at the board game while Atoll started reading from the rule book, which he quickly discarded halfway through reading the instructions. Then he told everyone to pick a piece and place it on the starting section of the board, then began taking turns trying to progress through the game. There were two sets of cards to draw, rules for certain squares, chips and pieces that didn't make a lot of sense. It was like getting copley, but if it was more needlessly complicated. Atoll continued to swear that it would be fun, though. There was no real organization to the path one was supposed to follow, and one part of the path even overlapped with itself. Eventually, Mill begged Atoll to change the game to something far similar, like Snack Island or War. Atoll refused to listen to any of their suggestions, despite visibly struggling with how the game worked, either. He waited for Minnow to become desperate enough to suggest table turf, when he finally agreed to end the game. Where do you even get this game? Minnow was saying in a defeated tone. Honestly, I ordered it off a slightly suspicious site like five years ago and never opened it. All the time they told you guys said it was a good game? Lying. Spreading false truths. Misinformation, if you will. I haven't played the game until now. Atoll grinned. You're so awful. Minnow rested their head against the table. I know. You said table turf, though. Atoll leaned forward against the table, resting his chin in his hand and giving a malicious smile. I just wanted you to stop playing that game, but we should not play table turf because it's, uh, it's two-player. Minnow folded their arms. This is a group game night. I don't know, Minnow. I think it'd be interesting to watch. Gar shrugged. Minnow got uncomfortably close to Gar, and he leaned away. Are you rooting for my downfall? Do you want to see me fail in front of all my friends, which I have so few of? You are cruel. Their voice was barely a whisper. Why don't you let me help you pick the cards? He said quietly. Is that even allowed? Minnow looked over at Atoll. Why not? It'll be a two-person effort for each team. Prune, you can judge. Atoll looked up at Prune, who sighed. And I help you, Atoll? 
tilted at him curiously. Precisely, he grinned. Yar, do you actually know how to play table turf? Minnow frowned, sounding slightly worried. It was Hope and Whimsy's favorite thing for a long time. Garland against the couch. That doesn't answer the question? Typically, when either of those two get into something, I end up learning about it. He sighed. I know how to play. I only ever win out of pure luck. Minnow sighed, looking over at Atoll who was holding up a deck of cards with a raised eyebrow. This is going to go horribly. Doesn't help that I don't exactly have a good deck. Gar watched him for a moment and then leaned a bit closer to them. What's your deck? They dug around a bag they had with them before they took them out and handed them to him. He looked through them for a moment and then handed it back to them. It wasn't necessarily a terrible deck, but it was missing a few things that might make it a bit better. It's bad, isn't it? Minnow huffed, keeping an eye on Atoll who was shuffling through his. I assume you don't exactly have any replacements. It's a game night. I forgot things, but I had a feeling. He rolled his eye, taking a deck from his pocket and flipping through them for a moment. You actually have a deck? Minnow was staring at the cards, nearly confused. Yes? I said I know how to play. He picked out two very specific cards from the deck and handed them to Minnow. They looked at him and then quickly shot a glance at him. Not a word. He shook his head. It was two fresh cards he had no intent of using tonight, but they would definitely help the other deck that Minnow had set up. Minnow took two other cards from their deck and looked over to the rest of them. Then they shuffled their cards and looked at Atoll. I'm going to try my hardest to destroy you. Minnow didn't sound at all confident. Oh, good luck! He smiled. The two started the match, and helping Minnow was a bit frustrating. Gar had to teach Minnow how specials worked, which felt odd to him, considering he was used to being taught things like this. Minnow also struggled to grasp the concept that sometimes it was better to use cards which covered smaller areas rather than immediately trying to use as many cards that had large spreads as quickly as possible. Atoll had a much better grasp on how to play the game, and hardly needed the help from Tilly, though her help only made it harder for Minnow. Gar watched Minnow fumble with their cards a few times, but they tried to listen to him. A few times they didn't listen to his advice, and it only worked out for them once. Atoll made Minnow keep playing after they lost the first time, and the second. Though finally on their third attempt, Minnow actually managed to pull off a win. Minnow placed down the last card for the round and quickly reeled back their hands as if they would ruin their win if they touched it. Then they stared at the board with wide eyes as Atoll huffed and folded his arms. Does this... did I... Minnow was looking at the board, then Gar, then Atoll, then the board again. You won, Gar said, looking over the board. Congratulations, first one in your entire life. Perun clapped her hands. Not the first one ever. First one against Atoll, but not the first ever. Minnow shot up and put their hands on their hips. I'm sure it wasn't. Perun rolled her eyes. Hey, be nice to Minnow. I can vouch. They won a few games at one time that we were hanging around downtown. Tilly shook her head. You know what? Atoll stood up, still smiling. You did win. Come with me to the kitchen. I have a prize. What's the prize? Because I'm not buying it. You're going to hit me with a cast iron skillet. Minnow squinted. You know those wines that have glitter in them? Atoll raised an eyebrow. I'm aware. Minnow was now tilting their head up in interest. I have three different colors. Okay, you know what? You've got my attention. I pray this isn't just me being gullible and easily persuaded. Minnow sighed, beginning to walk toward the kitchen. Come on, Perun. I've got things that might interest you, too. Atoll said as he passed her. Right, I'm sure. She didn't sound convinced, but followed him anyway. Girl watched the three walk to the kitchen, standing up but not following them. He stared at a picture next to the door frame of the kitchen that had some images of Atoll, Kane, and two other inklings he didn't recognize. You're not following them? Tilly's voice distracted him from staring at the picture. He looked at her for a moment. Uh, no. You know anything, or... Tilly tilted her head to the side. I don't drink, so I don't see the point. He blinked. Oh, I see. Gotcha. She nodded. You didn't want anything either? No, not really. She shrugged. It fell silent for a moment. Tilly was staring awkwardly at the floor. Then Gar remembered the thing he wanted to talk to her about. He looked toward the kitchen, then focused her gaze on her. Can I talk to you? Just for a second. Gar lowered his voice to barely a whisper. Oh, um, yeah. Now see why not. Tilly kept herself quiet. Though, is there a reason we're whispering? Not particularly. It's just... I wanted to... He had to look for the words. Apologize. Apologize for what? Tilly laughed a little. I didn't... Okay. He shook his head lightly. I hope I'm not misinterpreting this, but those earrings you tend to wear. He glanced to the side before looking at her again. What ones? She looked confused. The... Well, you tend to wear fishing lures. He 
you feel like this might be awkward to talk about. He had no idea if this was the proper etiquette to talk about them, but you couldn't imagine why it wouldn't be. Oh. I just want to say I'm, a uh, sorry. Don't say it. Till he warned, her eyes looking just a bit glassy. Say, what? He squinted. Gar, I don't think this is the right place to reject- No! He waved out one of his hands before he quickly shut himself up, looking toward the kitchen. He heard Minnow, Atal, and Baroon still talking about something. They either hadn't heard or didn't care. No, that's not what I'm trying to- Okay. Gar heard again, quieter. I wanted to say, uh, sorry for not realizing. I probably insulted them, by accident. I know they're usually handmade, well, I know now. He stumbled over his words. Huh? Till he seemed to be in deeper confusion than before. I didn't know what lures meant. Genuinely. That doesn't... doesn't translate... He tried. I didn't think to... I'm sorry. He put his hand on the back of his neck, awkwardly. He wasn't sure why this was so hard for him to communicate. Oh, I didn't know. Huh. Tilly's eyes got wider, and she stared at the floor. I thought about it the other day, and I figured I'd look into it, and, uh... Yeah. Tilly said with a wince. I'm not misunderstanding. Am I just being sure? He asked. Tilly was staring at him, her face turning a bit pink. Gar was pretty sure he was right, based on the little bit of research he'd done and the way Tilly acted, but he still didn't like to assume. He especially didn't like to assume that someone felt a particular way for him, and he wouldn't want to be wrong. And he didn't exactly understand why anyone would feel that way for him, but that was a thought for another time. No, I don't think you are... <laughs> She gave him a slightly monotonous response with a weak laugh. So you... He didn't finish his sentence. Yes. Ah. Gar looked at the floor. He listened for a moment to the voices in the kitchen. They still seemed preoccupied with whatever it was they were doing. He heard Minnow say something about it not being drinkable. Then until he said something and he focused again. It's funny, actually, she was saying. I've had this crush for... God, how long? Years. She turned her head back up to the ceiling. I'm pretty bad at hiding things, or at least I thought I was, you know? I was too scared to say anything at first. I've been dropping every hint I can think of. Figured the lures would make it really obvious. Should have guessed that it was just an inkling thing, and... Gar was realizing just how many things he'd been completely oblivious to up to this point, and it was only serving to make him feel stupid. He bent to his cheek as she kept talking, trying to pay attention. I feel silly. I should have gone about that a different way. I was acting like a character from a rom-com or something. Her face was turning a deeper shade of pink. Then again, I was just really terrified to see what you'd say and what you'd think. I haven't really met anyone like you before. I hate to lose a friendship over it if you made you comfortable, and I hope it doesn't. He coughed. What? She stopped and looked at him. Well, it doesn't. He felt his face get slightly warmer. And to be fair, I could have handled that situation way differently, too. What do you mean? Maybe I could have questioned things more... A little, bit, a little bit less completely oblivious. He cleared his throat. Ah, uh, yeah, I see. She nodded slowly, still looking at him awkwardly. But, uh, you also said it doesn't bother you, but what's that? Her voice trailed. He felt his face get just a bit warmer. He also began to regret not tying his tentacles up. He had a sinking feeling he wasn't used to. I don't know how to word this. I think I, well... If you're interested, I... He wished he had gained him his confidence, which had inexplicably disappeared, back for even a second. He hated struggling with words. Are you suggesting that we, like, date, or... She looked at him with wide eyes. Uh, if you want to. Girl looked at the ceiling before he turned his attention back to Tilly. Yes, I mean... She put one hand behind her head. I mean, sure. I think it'd be cool. Yeah. She tried again. Okay, uh, Cool. He nodded, glancing off the door of the kitchen. They'd be back out soon, right? He felt like he probably should have saved this conversation for later, considering the fact that Minnow, Perun, and Atoll were a room away, and now his face felt uncomfortably warm, and he was pretty sure he could feel his tentacles curling. He was absolutely sure no one would know why they were doing that, and he didn't feel like explaining it. Even if it was as simple as saying as it was an involuntary response because he was happy. I didn't think this would ever happen. Wow. He heard Tilly mutter. He looked over at Tilly, and she glanced up at him. I don't know exactly how this works, so sorry in advance? He figured it was worth mentioning. Like, don't know what exactly. Tilly suddenly seemed curious. This whole thing. Gar walked around the coffee table, finally, so he could stand somewhat more directly in front of her. 
I haven't exactly ever... Oh, I remember you telling me. Tony nodded. That's totally okay. I mean, relationships are completely different with everyone, too, so even with past experiences, you won't know everything. Now, out of curiosity, what are you doing this week? He looked up. Not sure. I don't have anything else planned. Well, would it be too sudden and out of the way if you and I could just, uh... Not tonight, but some other time. Maybe go back to my apartment sometime and... Tilly's expression shifted. Gar, what are you... Not because... No. To talk. About things. He frowned and felt his jaw clench. I like setting boundaries, Sam. I like to establish them early so I don't cross a line. Oh. Okay. Yeah, that sounds nice. Tilly's smile came back. Okay. He sighed. They got quiet again, and Tilly was looking at him without saying anything. It was that familiar type of look, where she was looking at him, but he wasn't quite sure where or why. He had already wished that the heat he felt in his face would go away. This made it slightly worse for whatever reason. He heard footsteps coming from the kitchen and quickly looked toward the doorway. Gar, dude, I know you don't drink, but dude, holy fuck, look at this shit. I don't even want to drink it. There's no fucking way this is consumable. Minnow was walking in with a glass full of something. Gar took a step backward and tried to relax, staring at whatever Minnow had in their hands. Is that the... The wine? Yeah, supposedly. It's so sparkly for no damn reason, and I do not believe Atoll when he says that it's safe to drink. It is safe to drink. Why else would I have it? Atoll was saying, following Minnow into the room with an eye roll. I wouldn't put it past you to hand me something, tell me it's edible, and then have it turn out to be glass. Minnow looked at Atoll. Why would I do that? Atoll shook his head. A better question to ask is, why the fuck you'd be given something that looks like glass, because that's hard to disguise, and just fucking eat it? No questions asked. Perun stared at Minnow. Same reason they once bit into a golden egg. Pure curiosity, Gar told Perun. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Minnow is a dumbass, Perun sighed. I am not? What the fuck? Minnow grasped. I was curious, so I used the scientific method of fucking around and finding out. That is not the scientific method, Tilly frowned. It is. What do you think experimentation is? They tipped their head to the side, seeming doubtful. Well, okay, you're kind of right, Tilly nodded slightly, but why you would use it to try to bite into a golden egg is beyond me. I am simply not a coward. I cannot be the only one who's ever wondered what they taste like. I'm just one of the only ones to search for an answer, Minnow grinned. Probably because that's just about one of the only things that you can do to get fired, Perun grumbled. Also, there's gotta be something like, some sort of health violation there. Like, I'm surprised you didn't get food poisoning or something, Atoll stared at Minnow. Technically, you all said it was a bite from a golden egg, not the whole egg or anything, so maybe if they ate the whole thing, they would have been poisoned, till you shrugged. I wouldn't have. I'm unstoppable. Mo set down the glass on the coffee table before folding their arms. You are possibly the most stoppable force in existence, though? Perun squinted at them. That's literally a lie. I could deck you and you'd be stopped. I promise. Perun took a step closer to them. Okay, one. Not fair. Two. Why do you have the habit of threatening physical violence when I try to say something bold? You know I know it's a lie. Minnow huffed. Gotta make sure you don't get too ahead of yourself. I am simply reminding you of reality. Everyone is so mean to me. Minnow hung their head. Sure we are. Atal sounded sarcastic. As if you don't tell me to shut up all the time. Dude, all you do is make your mom jokes, make fun of me, or tell me too much about your personal life and 94 boyfriends. Minnow tipped her head to the side. I thought it was supposedly 87. Atoll raised an eyebrow. You're right, sorry. 98. And yet, I'm the mean one. Atoll kicked the lightly at the carpet. You just have an infinitely replenishing source of boyfriends or something, Perun suggested. I guess there's a new conspiracy theory. Atoll leaned against the wall. What would you even do with that many boyfriends? That's the lamest conspiracy theory ever. Mino waved one of their hands out. I can imagine a couple things, actually. Also, what conspiracy isn't slightly lame? Atoll asked. My favorite, they said with a hint of boldness. What's that? Perun tilted her head. That I'm sane. Minnow looked slightly evil while they said that. Mine too. Gar nodded and closed his eye. Glad to know someone else agrees. Minnow nodded. Absolutely terrible. So happy for you. Anyway, this was supposed to be a game night. A looked over the pile of board games and cards. Yeah, but you picked the worst possible game to play. Perun shook her head. Either some bootleg game or a two-player game that we pretend is totally multiplayer. We could play Uno and it'd be an easy, agreeable game. Atoll waved his hand. Kane is dramatic, so disregard what he said. Sounds like an, an absolutely horrible idea, but I'm admittedly better with colors and numbers than I am with strategy, so I'm going to agree with anything that isn't the first game we played or table turf. Mino leaned back on their heels. I'm just going to play whatever I'm told to, Gar sighed. 
I don't have any particular preference. Tilly shrugged. You know, sounds fine. Perun looked toward Atoll. Then that's what you play. Gather on the table yet again, Atoll announced, pushing himself from the wall to the coffee table, picking up the cards. The night went fairly smoothly from that point on. Atoll lost several times in Uno to various people, and Perun went on a win streak of three before Tilly broke it. Gar actually had a fair bit of fun playing the game, and was entertained by Minnow when they got competitive. It was a bit late by the time the party ended and everyone left around the same time, except Perun, who left a bit early because she had to get back to James. Atoll waved goodbye before slamming the door abruptly because Kane yelled something from another room. Gar backed away from the door as there continued to be quieter yelling, but the yelling wasn't exactly aggressive or really angry. Gar walked out of the apartment complex with Minnow and Tilly, and it was relatively quiet for most of the way out. Gar stopped once until they got out of the door and onto the street. He was glad Atoll didn't live too far from his apartment. Well, that was pretty fun. Uh, I didn't think I could actually have fun at Atoll's house, but then again, I was expecting there to be, like, every resident of Inkopolis as guests. Minnow toward the sky. It was nice. Glad he kept it small. Gar closed his eye briefly. Hope he does something like that again. Tilly smiled. Yeah, me too, but I'm, like, dying of chronic sleepiness. Minnow sighed. Can I get a hug before I go home? Sure. Tilly offered one arm to Minnow and another to Gar. Gar sighed and took a step closer, pulling them both into a hug. He held the hug for several seconds before backing up. Minnow seemed happy, a wide grin on their face. They gave him that strange look they started to give him. Interestingly, they gave Tilly the same look. All right, well, I'm out. Have a good night. I'll, uh, text when I find something cool to send. Minnow clapped their hands together and then shot finger guns at both Tilly and Gar. All right, good night, Minnow. Gar watched Minnow start to walk off. Good night. Be safe, Tilly called. Minnow held a thumbs up, continuing to walk toward their apartment complex. Gar watched him go until they turned a corner. He turned back to face Tilly, who was staring at him with a slightly pink face. So, uh, she shuffled. I should probably get going, too, huh? Yeah. He looked down at the sidewalk, then back up at her. She looked like she was expecting something, and he wasn't quite sure what it was she was waiting for. He tilted his head slightly, and she tilted her to the opposite direction. He squinted at her slightly as she seemed to lean in just a bit closer to him. Her face was turning a deeper shade of pink as she did. He set his hand on her shoulder, and she froze. Tilly? Yeah? Good night, he said awkwardly, taking his hand off her shoulder. He turned to start walking toward his apartment, glancing back to see her staring at him. He wouldn't help but smile just a bit. He knew what Tilly wanted, and he just wasn't quite ready for that. That's something he would have to work his way up to. The walk home was mostly him thinking about it, replaying that particular conversation through his head multiple times. The things he could have done better. He kept rerunning all the times he'd fumbled with his words until he got a text from Tilly when he reached the door to his apartment. She suggested that she meet up sometime to talk about what he wanted to, taking on a good night and a small heart emoji. He sent an agreement and a heart back and turned off his phone, walking to his apartment and closing the door behind him. He felt tired, but it came with a strange feeling of comfort. Almost content.